Now, Pharaoh's ways of dominating the Jews. Um, in Exodus chapters 1 and 2, you get this... Uh, and actually, I want to put it into a bigger context. What is God's plan for the Jews? Um, let me go back before the Jews. What was God's plan for all humankind? They were in the Garden of Eden. They were told to work the garden, and they were told to do what? Adam and Eve. Multiply and be what? Fruitful and fill the earth. Was God's destiny for humankind that they multiply and fill the earth? Now what happens? Okay, you get Noah and all that stuff. Then when you get with Abraham again, Abraham's descendants, God says to Abraham's descendants, they are to do what? They are going to be as many as the what? Sand of the seashore as the stars of the heavens. They are to multiply and be fruitful and multiply. Abraham's descendants are to be fruitful and multiply. So God's destiny for Adam and Eve now gets taken over by, a by Abraham. And now who stands in the way of that? There's a guy named Pharaoh, and Pharaoh says, wait, wait a minute, there's too many of these Jews. We've got to kill these Jews. We, there's too many. They, they're multiplying too much. And so Pharaoh will oppose God's plan for the multiplication of the seed. Do you see that? So Pharaoh here is going to go at odds um, with, with God. And basically Pharaoh is going to attack God's son to destroy God's son. And God will attack who? Whom? It will attack Pharaoh. Well, Pharaoh will attack God's son. Will God take out Pharaoh's son? Do you, do you see the similarities there? Pharaoh will try to destroy God's son. God will take out Pharaoh's son. And so this is resisting God's the major plan for Israel with Pharaoh and things. And now what happens? How does Pharaoh first do it? In chapter 1 of Exodus, starting in verse 8, let me start back with verse 6. It says, Now Joseph and all his brothers in that generation died. But the Israelites were fruitful and multiplied greatly and exceedingly became exceedingly numerous so that the land was filled with them. Then a new king who did not know Joseph came to power. Look, he said, the Israelites have become much too numerous for us. Come, we must deal shrewdly with them. So down verse 11, they put slave masters over them to oppress them with, with forced labors. And they built Python in the cities of Python and Ramses. Okay. So Pharaoh says there's too many, they're multiplying. How are we going to get their numbers down? We will enslave them, we will oppress them, and we will work the daylights out of them. And if we work the daylights out of them, they're going to have time to have children. They're going to be too tired, so we'll work them to death. Okay? And so basically he puts taskmasters over them, and the taskmasters enslave and oppress them, and Israel becomes slaves and stuff, and so then this gets really bad for Israel. But question, the more they oppress them, and the more they work them, what happened to the Israelis? Did the Israelis get stronger? Yeah, they worked hard and all of a sudden they get stronger and they multiply more. So then Pharaoh says, okay, that didn't work. We got to try plan number two. Well, what's plan number two? He goes to these midwives and let me jump down to verse 15, chapter one, verse 15. And the king of Egypt said to the Hebrew midwives, whose names, whose names were Shifra and Pua. Shifra and Pua. How many midwives are named here? Two. Do we know the names of these midwives? Shifa and Pua. You say, Hillebrand, you don't really care about that. No, I don't. But what's interesting to me is, can you tell me the name of Pharaoh? What's Pharaoh's name? Pharaoh is Pharaoh. Is, is it Pharaoh Necho? Is it Aminopi? Is it, who is, is it Pharaoh? Do we know the name of Pharaoh? Or is this Pharaoh just labeled Pharaoh? Do we know the names of these Hebrew midwives? Yes. Do you see the irony here? We know the names of the Hebrew midwives. We don't know the name of the Pharaoh. Do you see what's going on in the text? Is Pharaoh being denigrated by the fact that he has no name, but these two midwives have names? Okay? And I think there's some literary play going on there with the way these midwives. So what happens with these midwives? He comes to the midwives and he says this. When you help the Hebrew women in childbirth, observe them on the delivery stool. If it is a boy, kill him. But if it is a girl, let her live. I mean, this is gender-based discrimination. This is terrible. The boys get killed, but the girls get to live. That's just not right. This is gender inequality. This is terrible. It's not an issue because it's just boys after all. So anyways. Yeah, okay. Do you see what, you see what I'm doing there? Do we have cultures today that are saying, let the girls die and let the boys live. 
same thing. There's countries that are doing that right now, okay? So I'm saying is, yeah, this is a big problem. Here they were killing boys, they were killing girls, things like that. Now, what did the midwives do? Are these midwives smart? Here's what the midwives do. The midwives, however, feared God. Notice that term, feared God. The Hebrew midwives, the midwives, however, feared God and did not do what the king of Egypt told them. And they let the boys live. Then the king of Egypt summoned the midwives and asked them, why have you done this? Why have you let the boys live? And the midwives answer, answered Pharaoh, the Hebrew women are not like the Egyptian women. They are vigorous and give birth before the midwives arrive. Question, is that the truth? Are the, are the Egyptian women different than the Hebrew women in the childbirthing process? No. It's a, okay. Are these women lying to the Pharaoh? Okay, playing off his prejudices, the Jews are different than the Egyptians. He, they're playing off the prejudice to get, to get at Pharaoh. They're, are they lying to Pharaoh? Yes, they are. Does God bless liars? Is it okay to lie sometimes? Some people call this altruistic sinning. Altruistic sinning. They lie, but what does the Bible say about lying? Thou shalt not, what? Lie, it's a sin. Question, did God bless these midwives? Yes, he did. As a matter of fact, when they go to leave Egypt, guess who goes with them? Old Shifram Pua saying, hey man, that's our labor force there. We're going to go deliver some more babies. And so Shifram Pua went with the Israelites when they took off. God blessed them. They had a part in Israel, okay? Now the question comes up, how do you understand this? This is going to come up again and again. And let me just say how I would understand this. Let me give you a couple examples. Um, once upon a time, uh, we lived in Indiana for about 22 years. My children were raised, reared in Indiana. And in Indiana, uh, is anybody from Indiana here? Okay, Indiana. Okay, you have to understand, Indiana is different than Massachusetts, believe me. Okay, um, in Indiana, they only have one sport. They only play one sport in Indiana. And that sport is, and there is only one, basketball. Uh, my son, when he was in fourth grade, fourth grade, the high school coach was scouting him out at fourth grade. A high school coach, fourth grade kid. They're already, they, they start training these kids with basketball from like the time that they're born and I'm serious, the kids. So I, you know, I played ball at Houghton College and stuff. And so I thought, well, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna teach my son how to play ball here in this. Thing. So I took him out, and I thought, well, you know, gets a little bit older, I'll let him, you know, beat me. I thought, it'd probably be ninth or tenth grade, I'll let him beat me and stuff. So, but anyway, so I was trying to work with him. And when you get a kid that age, uh, he was about seventh grade. There's right hand and left hand. Which hand is the weak one? His left hand's weak. And so I basically want to develop his left hand. And so what I do is I'll push him one way and then, you know, try to get him to develop his left hand and force him to go left and stuff. So we're out playing, and this little kid of mine, seventh grade kid, looks at his father, and I'm trying to get in position to force him to go left and stuff, and he goes like, he goes like this. He goes like this. He actually, he actually tried to deceive me. The kid tried to deceive me like he was going to take a shot or something. He actually threw a fake and deceived his father deceptive little rascal. So I jump up ready to swat it and the dude goes around me. It was like deception of the father is the worst kind. Okay, He lied to me. Was there intent? Was there intent to deceive? Was there intent to deceive his father? There was intent to deceive. Okay? Now question. You laugh because you say, in basketball, is it okay to have the intent to deceive? As a matter of fact, is he half the game throwing fakes and things? Yes, okay, that's part of the game. Football the same way. You get them thinking you're going one way, and what do you go the other way? Okay, by the way, in war, is it the same way? America's going into Kuwait. We have all our troops, and it's all our troops, and we're going in this way. And then guess what? The generals fake them out because they go in the exact opposite way that they were preparing to go. Is that part of war? Uh, Civil War, uh, Gettysburg, okay? You, you're going to do one thing, and you fake the other way. Okay, so that's part of war. So question, do you have to ask yourself then, the Hebrew midwives, they lied to this thing. Is it okay to lie when somebody's going to kill babies? Is it okay? To, let, me, let me put it in another context. So you're in Nazi Germany, okay, and you're in Holland. And you're in Holland, and you get a bunch of Jews in your basement. And the Nazis come to your door, and they say, you got any Jews in there? And you say, well, I'm a Christian, and I'm sworn never to lie. Yeah, they're all right down there in the basement. 
Hey, question, would that have been, question, okay. So the guy asked you up front, you got any Jews in there? If you go, yeah, they're right there. Question, is that a great atrocity? And you participated in. Question, what do you say? No, oh, they went that way. You better go fast to catch them. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You, in a war context, when they're out to kill somebody, do you deceive? Is that part of the, quote, game? Okay, now you say, Hillebrand, are you saying that it's okay to lie every time, you know, you know, things like that? And then this brings up a thing. Does God bless liars? And the answer is, did God bless the Hebrew midwives? Yes, he did. Did they fear God? Is that why they did what they did was because they feared God? It's like, you know, if somebody's going to come to your door and say, hey, I'm going to kill, I'm going to kill your family. Where, where are your, your sons? Where are they? And I say, well, they're hiding under the bed in there. Okay, that's not, that's not good. You say, no, um, I'm not going to do that. And you're going to tell them something different and stuff. And then this, does this mean then total relativism? You say, Hildebrand, are you open this up for situation ethics, that the situation determines what's right and wrong, and therefore, question, well, does the Bible clearly say lying is wrong? Does the Bible clearly say that? Thou shalt not lie. Okay. By the way, is the Bible consistent in saying that all through Scripture? Thou shalt not lie. Is integrity and honesty a really important feature? However, having said that, are there certain contexts in the preservation of life that you use deceptive tactics? Yes. Is war one of those contexts? And it's basically what you've got is a war going on here with Pharaoh and this thing. So I think what the Hebrew midwives did was right. Okay. And God looks at it and, and blesses them and stuff. And so I'm saying it doesn't open a can of worms to say, well, I lied to my mother because, well, she was going to really get angry if I didn't, and I didn't want to make her feel bad, so I lied to her to protect her from herself. Okay, that's a bunch of baloney, okay? But when, you know what I'm saying? So you've got to use your head on this. But all I'm trying to say is that you've got to take context. You see the importance of context? The Hebrew midwives then uh, fear God, and they deceive Pharaoh, and they are blessed as a result of that. Now.